One of the questions I'm asked most often is, why continue or even expand our efforts in space? Why try to go to Mars, for example? Uh, there are many answers to this. One of them is that we ought to be a people who can do such things. And I'll get to that later. But first, the practical aspects. We spend 0.8% of a $2.4 trillion federal budget on space endeavors, on moving forward in space. Now, many people have heard before the litany of things that space investments have done for us in the past, the spin-off technologies, for example. Our entire solar energy industry had its start with NASA. The communication satellites that we now rely upon to flip dial anywhere on Earth, and that people in Africa, in poor countries, now have cell phones where they could never have dreamed of having a landline. Our ability to navigate all over the planet with GPS, we take it for granted, all a result of investment in space. Weather satellites that not only enable us to see when storms are coming, but that provided the data that have allowed our brilliant climate scientists to make weather models that can not only predict weather pretty well over the two or three day basis in your area, but even give you a good basic planning idea of what the weather will be like 10 days in the future. That's, that's miraculous level according to our ancestors, according to me just 20 years ago. And by the way, these are the same climate scientists we rely upon for weather reports and think are brilliant when they're predicting the weather, but so many of us decry them as fools when they're talking about climate. We'll put that aside. One of the biggest things that we got from the space program happened at the very beginning. And that was spy satellites. Or better yet, the legal precedent that allowed spy satellites. There are people who believe that Dwight Eisenhower, President Eisenhower, delayed the launch of our first satellites, the Explorer and the Vanguard, deliberately, in order for the Soviets to launch Sputniks first. Why? Why would he do that? He took a lot of political flack for it happening. Well, for one thing, it resulted in a space race that then engendered all these technologies. But the main thing is, Eisenhower really wanted spy satellites. He wanted the whole world to be able to look at the whole world. He was the first Mr. Transparency in some ways, because he knew that if everybody could look at everybody else, nuclear war would be less likely. By delaying our, our first satellites, the result was the Soviet Sputnik set a precedent that national sovereignty stops at 100 miles. And out there, it belongs to everybody. So, passing over another country with a satellite is not a violation of sovereignty. And it saved all our lives. <laughs> is that enough reason to be grateful to the space program? There was a senator who suggested back in the 60s that NASA be granted royalties on the technologies that it developed. Not oppressive amounts of royalties, after all, the government's job with research is to stimulate the economy and spread things around. That's fine. But, say for instance, a 1% royalty, even a 5% royalty on all of these technologies that I've mentioned, the solar cells, image processing, water purification, which may save all our lives again, if it prevents water wars, which some predict as the world gets thirstier in the next 10, 20 years, uh, all the medical advances to come out of NASA, if all of these things were to get a 1% more royalty, far less than normal commercial rates of royalty, NASA's budget would be paid for entirely out of our earlier investments. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is this. We're told relentlessly that we have too many problems here on Earth. Well, 
Yeah. Except elsewhere, I'll get into more specifics about this argument. But any close reading of history and the statistics of the moment show that we should really calm down about this. There are urgent problems. There are people starving. There are uh, ecological problems. We have to urgently, I'm not saying calm down and not feel urgent. We need to urgently apply ourselves to solving global climate change. But this tendency to think that we'll improve and get better only with self-flagellating guilt trips has infected Hollywood uh, and, and our entire mythology. Where is it written that you motivate people to do better and to do more? With guilt. Pride in accomplishment is a far better motivator. And what have we accomplished in the last 100 years, in the last 50 years, in the last 20 years? World net wealth is still going up per capita even in a deep recession. The number of premature babies who die goes down every year. The fraction of children who go to school goes up every year. The fraction of human beings who experience violence, either at the hands of criminals or their government or invading armies, is at the lowest level in all of human history. In other words, while we're talking about all these problems to be solved, we've got to also say, let's invest in tomorrow too. Now, so far all the things I've been talking about may irk either people on the left or people on the right. It's the left-right political axis that irks me. It causes people to oversimplify. It causes people on the left to go for the notion that you make citizens and nations better only through guilt, and therefore it results in the kind of suspicion of technology on the part of people like James Cameron in Avatar, who's using new technologies to give us wonderful, joyful experiences. He and all the rest of the people who liberally want to make a better world need to realize you don't make people better just with guilt. There's something to be said for the can-do spirit. The spirit of, we can solve things. The right is no better. The right is worse. Officially, they're in favor of technology, in favor of space. But you know what's happening on the far right. The great war against science. No, we've got to turn away from these ideologies. And space is a centerpiece of the reasons why we should. It has nothing to do with left and right. It has to do with what kind of people we want to be. The kind of people who explore, who look outward, who think tomorrow can be different. Tomorrow can be better. These are the kinds of people who will deserve to go out into space who might be the first people to actually go interstellar and find out why the universe is so silent out there. And if there's a problem that other species are having, maybe be the people who go out and help. It's to be that kind of people. The people who are motivated by curiosity. By curiosity. These are the people who deserve also to solve the world's problems, who can solve the world's problems. The descendants of explorers, the descendants of the Enlightenment philosophers, who broke with 4,000 years of pyramidal oligarchies to say, we're going to change. We're going to make the future different than the past. And how can we do that if we don't have a flag far away, beckoning us on.